maintaining defensible space, hardening homes against flying embers, and identifying belongings to take an emergency are part of being ready. Preparing a family and home ahead of time of the, for the possibility of having to evacuate or being part of being set. And leaving when warned or ordered to evacuate are part of being ready to go. I cannot stress enough that all communities in the foothills of Yuba County need to help us by maintaining the defensible space to give us that fighting chance to defend their neighborhoods. The Office of Emergency Services, our mission is to minimize or reduce injury, loss of life, environment, and property damage from emergencies within Yuba County via preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. They are ongoing uh, campaigns and public outreach uh, via our Code Red emergency notifications, Know Your Zone campaign and public outreach, town hall meetings, biannual be prepared, national night out, community events like the Mountain Fair where we took third in the rib cook-off. Not a big deal. Uh, FEMA and Cal OES CSDI training uh, for all county employees. All county employees are disaster service workers uh, responding to emergency mutual management, mutual aid for neighboring counties, logistical coordination between public agencies and Yuba County departments, and federal and state grant management. Uh, during an emergency, we assist with Code Red and Zone Haven updates, regularly post updates to our county web pages and social media, assist with setting up identified evacuation centers, sheltering for citizens and livestock with the help of Health and Human Services, Care and Shelter, and the Yuba Agriculture Commissioner. After an emergency, interagency recovery coordination, established local assistance centers uh, with Cal OES, volunteer groups, FEMA, community service groups, and public works. So if uh, people have been displaced, had their homes destroyed, getting them their paperwork, kind of fast tracking that so they can get back on with their lives a little bit easier and a little bit sooner. Uh, recovery debris operations and management, long-term housing with public works and FEMA, disaster recovery grant management, and then ongoing grants. Uh, this last year we've been heavy on communication grants, uh, getting sheriff's patrol cars, uh, patrol vehicles outfitted with first nets so they've got better communication in the foothills. We know that's been an ongoing uh, problem. We recently were awarded um, a Cal OES HF grant, so we've improved our antennas. Uh, improvements to Oregon Peak with battery backup, and it covers everything, not just for uh, law enforcement first responders, but school buses through the area, uh, so that they know, you know, if they're heading to the school or evacuating, that they've got good radio communication. First up I'm going to talk about today is our home resilience program. Um, you see that on the left side of the slide here. Um, and that actually encompasses three different pieces. So the first part of that is our wildfire mitigation review program. This provides free on-site review of um, residents' home and property by our trained volunteer advisors. It is a uh, volunteer-led program um, supported by Yuba Water Agency funding. And so what, what this program does, um, it, it's really our mo most important form of education when it comes to being there one-on-one -on -one with residents, looking at their own home, um, and then educating them on, on their own personal vulnerabilities to wildfire. And getting that one-on-one that -on -one time is really important. Um, and then what, what residents walk away from with uh, with, from their review is we provide them with a checklist of actions that they can take to improve their home survivability um, in case of wildfire. And so that covers both home hardening um, upgrades and as well as defensible space improvements that they can take. Um, and I know, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of residents, residences out there in the foothills that are not well prepared. There certainly are some that are well prepared, but um, no matter how prepared you think you are, there is always more you can do. We currently have three volunteer advisors and six, um, six volunteers in training to become these, our advisors. Um, as of last week, we completed, have completed uh, 144 reviews um, since the program started in January of 2021. And I do like to note here, we, in the, the full year of 2021, we completed 38 reviews and so far this year in 2022, um, we've almost tripled that number just in the first less than eight months. And we do want to be really clear as well that um, we, this, is, this is a totally voluntary program and we, we are not enforcement, we are not any of that, we are just here to provide information. Um, our goal is to, is, is to educate residents and, and help protect lives and property. And that leads into a couple of our 
um, two new programs that we have. They're cost share programs. Um, so I'll touch on each of those briefly. The first one is our home hardening cost share. The review is required to be eligible for this cost share program. Um, if you do the work, you submit an application, then you can, um, we will reimburse 50% of your, your home hardening or your defensible space costs up to $2,000. So I know that won't cover everything for everyone, but uh, $2,000 is definitely something. So um, it, it has been great to help out a lot of our residents. The, the before and after photos we have here actually from participants in our cost share program. Um, on the left there, we have some folks have made, um, they've put in rock mulch and they've torn out um, either either bark mulch or like flammable hedges they had up against uh, against the wall. And that's at that first zero to five feet um, that is recommended to be vegetation free. Um, the photo in the middle is a photo of gutter guards um, so that leaf litter and and embers don't collect in the gutter there. Um, and then the photo on the right are uh, foundation vents. And so the before photo, um, this person had quarter inch mesh screen on their foundation vents. Um, everyone has these on their home. Um, they're essential to you know keeping your house ventilated, but that quarter inch mesh, um, the embers can blow right through there and basically catch the house on fire from the inside. Um, so what they've done with our cost share program in that after photo, they've replaced that large mesh with a, a smaller eighth inch mesh and that stops the embers from getting inside. So far we've reimbursed a little over $17,000 uh, to local residents on a little over $97,000 worth of project costs. So they report how much in total they spent. And so they've, um, residents have so far put out 97,000. Um, we have currently about $61,000 remaining in our current funding, so I do encourage everyone listening. Um, you know, there's definitely still money left. There is a time frame on it, though. Uh, currently, currently, we have the money until November. Um, we're working on getting an extension on that, but just in case, get, you know, get the work done now. Get your applications in now. What I heard you say is you have money free, free money. That makes their house safer. It's this is safer. better than the lottery. You, you can't lose. If you're willing to spend a few dollars, you mm -hmm. get reimbursed at 50%. Is that correct? Yes, 50%. Um, it has to, you know, we have a whole list on our website. We have handouts as well. Um, we have a list of specific eligible activities that count. But, um, yeah, 50% up to $2,000. <laughs> I have a quick question. Absolutely. On, I'm sure you see the aftermath of fires and where you'll see a, a burnt house, burnt house, and then one that is completely untouched. And it seemed like that's a good promotional video to show what you can do if you do harden the house. Um, that seems to be pretty common to see that. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a raging horrendous fire, then you know what, how you can stop it. Um, is 100 feet still a recommended distance? It's 100 feet, yes. If you're on a slope, it's more. Um, I believe CAL FIRE might actually be able to talk to that even more. But currently, yeah, what, what um, our programs cover as far as a cost share is that 100 feet. So the other cost share program um, is really similar. It's the Defensible Space Cost Share Program. Um, like we're kind of talking here, uh, the it, it involves basically reducing, reducing ladder fuels, um, disrupting fuel continuity within these, these spe specific zones around your home. Um, and so again, 50% reimbursement um, of expenses related to defensible space up to $2,000. The reason we have these two separate programs is, is really because these two pieces, home hardening and defensible space go hand in hand. Um, to protect your home from wildfire. It's not, it's not just one or the other or one piece of one of them. Um, you really need to be doing, doing all, of, all of the above um, to protect your home. So, um, and, and just to clarify the eligibility too, if you do home hardening work and you do defensible space work, you can apply for both programs. So you could do $8,000 worth of work and get $4,000 back. So those, that was the, you know, our, some of our key residential programs that I wanted to touch on today. We, we definitely have others. I encourage everyone to go to our website, yubafiresafe.org, um, to check out 
more about, um, about those and our other residential programs. But I also wanted to touch today on our, our current fuel reduction projects that we have, where we have a, a series of shaded fuel breaks um, in, in the Oregon House, Dobbins, Brownsville area. Um, and the main goal of these fuel breaks is to serve as anchors for fire suppression activities and protect all the communities in this area, um, really s try to slow down a, a wildfire in certain conditions. Um, and then the other piece, the main piece of our fuel reduction projects is um, we do roadside fuel reduction work and that really, really supplements uh, Public Works' efforts. And so the main goal there is to provide safer evacuation routes and access for first responders in case of wildfire, and then also to help reduce the chance that, that any spark along the roadside will then take off into a wildfire. Uh, we have some great landowner partners um, who are working on this network of fuel breaks that you see here in the bright colors. I guess they're a little faded on the screen, but um, you can see the, the blue and the red there. But, so our network of fuel breaks are those, those long, winding, bright colors on the map. Um, what the map also shows is Yuba Water Agency's Yuba Foothills Healthy Forest Project, and that's shown there in gray. So I wanted to touch briefly on the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, or the, the CWPP. So we have, we have one in place, we being um, the Yuba County Foothills. There, we have one in place that was completed in 2014, um, but it is in need of an update. So um, I think this is a, a great conversation we're having here today um, that, that the CWPP also kind of feeds into. So Frank and I have been talking recently about working together to lead the, the update to the CWPP. Um, it's going to involve all the stakeholders in the region, including everyone here in this room. Um, it really, the goal is to, to identify and, and prioritize um, both both our local wildfire risks as well as um, areas for treatment um, and, and how we approach that long term. My name is Brian Estes. I'm the fire chief for CAL FIRE for the Nevada Yuba Placer Unit. I, I just wanted to start off with uh, talking about our commitment to Yuba County specifically and our history here with uh, um, you know, our, our history as a department starting way back with the Division of Forestry when the Yuba Ranger Unit was a standalone unit from the 1930s uh, through the mid-50s. And as many of you probably know, the, the original Caltrans yard out on Highway 20 in the uh, northeast part of town was our original Ranger Unit headquarters for the then Division of Forestry when each county had its own Ranger Unit. Um, and through, uh, you know, through collaboration and consolidation of, of our department and our evolution in the 1950s, Yuba counties and Nevada counties were merged uh, to become one ranger unit, still under the Division of Forestry. Uh, and then in the 1970s, um, both those counties merged with Placer County to form what is now the Nevada Yuba Placer Unit. Uh, and it's, it's one of our largest most complex CAL FIRE units in the North State, um, incorporating those three counties, as well as the administration of private lands in Sierra and Sutter counties that are SRA. So statewide last year, um, and, and some of these figures on acres are, are gonna incorporate both federal lands or public lands as well as private lands, but um, you know, 2021 was, was very typical of what we've seen over the past five to seven years of very long, destructive fire seasons, um, atypical of, of what we're all used to seeing, and, and frankly, um, a little different from what we're seeing this year, which was a, a more of a traditional ramp up. We'll see what the late fall and, and um, late summer and early fall brings us. But last year, uh, statewide, we, we, we experienced uh, over 8,000 wildland fires. Um, in those fires, we had 2.4 million acres burned and, and not all of that was on private lands, a lot of that was on public lands. Um, and in those combination of acres, we had uh, over 3,600 structures destroyed. Um, we dropped over 17 million gallons of retardant on those fires. We arrested 121 arsonists uh, last year, our arson and bomb investigators within our agency. Um, and we expended over $1.1 billion uh, in in the uh, extinguishment and mitigation of those incidents. 
So as we break it down into the Nevada Yuba Placer unit more locally here, we had 361 wildland fires across our unit in those three counties with over 4,800 acres burned. That's right in track, just a little bit over our five-year average. Um, but we, we did see over 210 structures destroyed um, uh, last year. And the majority of, of those structures were, were lost in the river fire, which spanned Placer and Nevada counties. But we also had uh, some, some destruction of private property uh, here in Yuba County. And currently we have multiple arson investigations still continuing across our unit uh, in all three counties. This graph shows a, a little bit of the, the destructive nature um, that we've seen in our recorded history. We basically started recording fire history, acres and destruction in the early 1930s. And if you look at the top 20 most destructive California wildfires, and you start out with that, with that piece of the pie that's gray, that, that spans 1932 through, through 1999. And then that blue span 2000 through 09. And then you see that expansive yellowish 10 through 19. The majority of that was obviously the campfire, um, almost 20,000 structures destroyed. But then uh, establishing uh, a continuing trend of 2020 through 2021 with uh, some very, very destructive fires. If you look at a similar graph with the largest fires, you would see that the red and the yellow are gonna take up the majority of that graph. And our CAL FIRE fuel reduction efforts as the Fire Safe Council mentioned, are really centered in our agency around the protection of communities, life safety, access, egress, and working with our close partners in law enforcement. We have a great relationship with YCSO and every single fire that we're on in, in this county, we are entered into unified command with YCSO because they have jurisdictional authority for evacuations. And, and so we're right there joined at the hip with them uh, in those efforts. So this does show uh, a little bit of, of the, those, what we call direct protection areas in Yuba County. And it's divided between three different land ownerships. As I said, we have a 33 million acres across the state of state responsibility area, unincorporated private tax paying. Across our unit, we're about 2.7 million acres. And that is identified by that big yellow band across the middle of Yuba County. To the east and northeast is FRA or Federal Responsibility Areas and that's typically going to be either U.S. Forest Service, BLM, National Park Service, uh, BOR, Fish and Wildlife. But in Yuba County we have kind of a unique environment and that's that patch of green down in the front country which is BL Air Force Base which is, uh, which is Federal Responsibility Area even though it's not National Forest Lands. And then the white areas are identified across the state as local responsibilities. And those are your municipalities typically identified as cities, incorporated cities. Not always, but typically. In those areas, we do not have any jurisdictional or fiscal authority for the suppression of wildland fires. But we do, um, as part of our mutual aid, mutual aid system, uh, assist those local municipalities with, with those threats from wildfires. This graph uh, shows a little bit of the history. Just over the last three years, 20, 21, and 22, um, it, you know, shows a snapshot of some of the fires that did escape that, um, that 10 acres or less. And, and as you can see, the numbers aren't tremendous on private lands, um, but each of those years we've had one that has been significant in nature. This year um, being the Rices fire uh, in June, late June of, of this year, which burned uh, almost a thousand acres. But, you know, frankly, we're very proud of the fact that we, we kept it out of the Yuba River drainage and from impacting the communities of Dobbins and Oregon House. It was a really, really aggressive initial attack by all agencies and very proud of those efforts. So in 2022, our fire season updates year to date statewide, our department um, has run about 350,000 uh, all-risk emergency incidents across the state. Of those incidents, about 5,000 of those have been wildland fires. And across the state, we're looking at about close to 30,000 acres that have been burned. Far lower than we've seen last year and in the past, uh, say, five-year average. But frankly, we're really moving into what I would call our peak part of the fire season. And, and the fuels are so stressed right now from the drought 
uh, and the hot and high temperatures that we've seen that I'm, I'm really looking at, um, you know, late, late August, September, October, and, and even sometimes the beginning of November, we just haven't seen those punctuated storms like we're so used to seeing in late September and early October. Here locally in NEU, uh, thus far we've run just over 23,000 responses across the unit and, uh, and 309 of those have been wildland fires. Hopefully you haven't most heard mo about most of those 309, which means we're doing our job. We have seen over 1,600 acres burned and 27 structures have been destroyed. Specific to Yuba County, we've seen just over 1,000 incidents across the board and 43 of those have been wildland fires here in Yuba County. So as we talked a little bit earlier with some of our presenters, we've seen fire prevention grants uh, totaling almost $8 million for this year across our three counties. Specifically in Yuba County, we've seen the Forest Health Grant uh, and Yuba Water Agency totaling $4.5 million and our fire prevention grants, which are really the ones we concentrate on those protections to communities, um, totaling about $1.5 million. Our staffing is full right now. We're at peak staffing. All our positions are 100% full, which gives us at peak 22 frontline staffed engines, four hand crews, four dozers, and over 430 personnel online. Um, this year, we were fortunate. We added a type two initial attack helicopter at Auburn headquarters in Placer County and a type one initial attack helicopter in Truckee Airport. Both of those are able to and respond on all wildland fires at high level dispatches, including here in Yuba County. And our, uh, in response to some of the um, uh, lowering numbers of our CDCR program, cooperative program we have for our inmate firefighting camps across the state, we've seen an uptick in our um, National Guard hand crews that have been placed into service. Uh, mo most prominently here in, in our unit, we have one staffed at Nevada City Station 20 that was permanently funded with captains and supervision for that crew on July 1st. Here specifically in Yuba County, we see the benefits and every single day here are the engines from the, the aircraft at Grass Valley Air Attack Base, which is our air tactical um, platform and two initial attack air tankers. Um, on the ground, we have five engines fully staffed, two at Smartsville, one at Loma Rica, and two at Dobbins. We have one dozer at Dobbins and two battalion chiefs that cover uh, both the 20 corridor and the northern end of the county, as well as a very proud history of our cooperative fire protection agreement with Loma, Loma Rica Browns Valley Fire Protection District. 